Hi everyone, it's Tuesday and peace be with you. We're exploring the parables of Jesus in Matthew's Gospel and we began last week with the parable of the lost sheep in Matthew 18 verses 10 to 14. Today we turn our attention to the next parable in Matthew which comes a little later in that same chapter beginning in verse 21. So back in verses 10 to 14, Jesus tells the parable of the lost sheep, explaining how sometimes Christians wander away from Jesus and the church, and Jesus, the shepherd, searches for them and brings them home. Then he immediately teaches in verses 15 to 20 about the obligation Christians have to forgive their fellow believer when they sin against them and repent. And then in verse 21, Peter asks a logical question in response to Jesus' teaching about forgiveness. Here's the question. Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? As if to say, okay, Jesus, you say we have to forgive those who sin against us when they repent. But what if they do it again and again and again? How many times do I forgive before I say enough is enough? And he makes a suggestion, a very generous suggestion on the face of it. He says, up to seven times. Well, most rabbis back in the day had a three strikes and out policy. So Peter is being pretty radical here in saying seven times. But he's not as radical as Jesus. Verse 22, Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Or it could be translated 70 times 7. Now it would be a mistake to get the abacus out and do the maths 70 times 7, 490. Because Jesus is abolishing the principle of counting altogether. He's saying there is no upper limit. Forgiveness is infinite. The number of times you forgive is the number of times your fellow Christian sins against you and repents. Wow. And then Jesus tells the parable to make the point. A man owed the king millions of pounds. The king called in the debt. The man who couldn't pay begged for time. The king didn't just give him more time or make a repayment plan lasting the rest of his life. Rather, he cancelled or forgave the entire debt. The man then goes out, sees a colleague who owed him just a few quid. He grabbed the man by the throat, demanded his money back. The man begged for time, but he had him thrown into jail until he could pay every last penny. In anger, the king, who heard about what had happened, reinstated the first man's debt and locked him up. The punchline comes in verse 35. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you, unless you forgive your brother from the heart. In other words, as those who have been forgiven our unpayable debt by God through Jesus, we must also forgive. And there is no limit to how many times we do it, just as God's grace towards us is without limit. So is there someone in your life who needs your forgiveness today? You may say, but they don't deserve it. You don't know how they've hurt me. But that's exactly the point. We don't deserve God's forgiveness any more than they deserve ours. And that's grace. God's love shown to those who don't deserve it. So why don't you join me now in a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this parable of the unmerciful servant. Thank you, Lord, for the honesty of it, for the realistic way in which Jesus knows our human nature. Lord Jesus, thank you for your extraordinary forgiveness of us. Lord, that though we don't deserve your grace, yet you pour it out upon us through your death on the cross. Lord, help us today to walk in grace. Help us today to give away the grace that we ourselves have received. Lord, help us in particular with those hurts that we have carried, perhaps for years and years. Lord, help us to move to a place where we're willing to forgive and then give us the ability to do it, we pray. 
Lord, thank you that you're patient with us. Lord, help us to walk in that love today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us. Do join us again for the next parable on Thursday this week. Until then, God bless you. Bye-bye.